Hello everyone, we're going to talk about TV formats and reality television this week in our last Industries Week of Television Analysis. Um, one of your readings this week is titled Pie in the Crust by Moran, and it is an analogy that he creates for how to understand television formats as opposed to television series. So a format is the structure of um, a television show. It's the crust. Um, the crust is same no matter what version of a pie you make. The filling is the content of the show. Um, it is the specifics of it. When we're selling a series, we're selling the whole pie. right? When you're selling a format, you're selling the crust and you provide your own filling that is culturally specific to you. So, what is a format on a technical definition? It is a blueprint of a television show that provides the underlying structure, that it's the beat breakdowns, it's the um, contest rules, whatever makes that show function as a show, um, that then can be created again brand new from that structure from that blueprint using local culture and aesthetics because what is considered pretty in the US is not considered pretty um, in Colombia or Argentina or um, Scandinavia or Japan right um, what is considered funny is going to drastically change right um, and so forth so a format is the idea um, and a how-to manual for you to create something that fits within your culture, within your network's design, so on and so forth. And end, and end, in your language, right? Um, American media is our one or number one exports from this country. Um, it's pervasive, but audiences will choose something um, of equal quality in their own language before they will choose something that is American or in English, which is like a duh, right? We'd always prefer to, okay, not always, most of the time prefer to watch things in English versus something that's subtitled. I think anime, we can make that exception, right? Okay. So, the theoretical underpinnings that happen um, to allow for formats to become big business is globalization, first and foremost. This is the idea that nothing stays nationally or domestically anymore, right? Every company is an international company, and they want to make money across those borders, across those language borders, those cultural borders. Um, and that we can't deny the influence of other cultures on our own. And when we start thinking of things as a global um, media landscape, all of a sudden, um, the national television systems then have to make adjustments, right? Um, and I'm thinking particularly like Netflix has Asian branches and South American branches and so on and so forth. Every major cable network has a locally specific version of them. So um, HBO has a uh, regional specific, um, FX, TNT, MTV, VH1 um, all have their local to that market network version um, to compete with the local national television systems, whether that's um, the big five here, right, ABC, CBS, NBC, or um, the BBC one, two, and three in the UK, um, or elsewhere, right? So there's this sort of tension between these global industries and the local versions that then need to be um, ne negotiated, right? Um, and formats is one of the ways in which we negotiate 
domestic programming and international programming because it's international content but with a local flair. Which brings us to types of programming. The local originated concepts and productions. These are homegrown TV shows, right? Whether that is something like Justify that's um, American based or Downton Abbey, which would be a British homegrown, right? Whatever was locally created from idea all the way through production in its domestic space. Then we have things like co-productions. Orphan Black's a great example. It's a U.S. Canadian one. Um, Netflix has a ton of co-productions with Japan and China um, and now in South America. Um, this is where the idea originates and both the local and the global companies work together to create something that will appeal to both um, generally American and whatever the other international nationality of origin is simultaneously. They were always meant to appeal to both sets of audiences. Um, format adaptations, however, are things like In Treatment or The Masked Singer or Ugly Betty, where the format, the original concept, um, did really well in its original location. It was then folded into a format, right, where they um, hollow out and reconfigure for a more generic base um, and then it is recreated and adapted for its new, new local um, area. So for example in treatment is originally from Israel and it was a 45 minute session just like you have, have um, in an actual therapy session um, and it was every day and every day was a different person. Um, HBO, I think it's HBO, one of the premium cable companies picked it up and recreated it here in the U.S. literally word for word from the script, an English translation of the script, but nonetheless it is exactly the same for season one, um, word for word. And then of course we have full-on imports, things like Downton Abbey comes over from the UK um, with no translation, no changes to it whatsoever. It is just airs as is. Um, Downton Abbey case PBS, right? Um, but we can also see some of that with anime that comes over from Japan. Maybe they redub it, but otherwise it stays the same. Um, Pokemon has minimal, not completely, but minimal changes to it. Um, similar shows. Right? So these are the four types of of productions or programming that gets sort of swapped around internationally.